This video is perhaps the last video on my customized wind rickening firmware discussed in video number 34 and 35. Many people had difficulty in changing its settings due to their limited or no coding knowledge. So to simplify that aspect, I have modified my previous bin file to make it user friendly and named it as Windrickening 2.0 which is now available for download on my github repository. In this new binary, user settings have been further simplified and some new features have been added to it. So in this short video, I am going to talk about all those new features that will make your windrickening upgrade process a lot easier. So with no further delay, let's get started. Go to VCC Ground GitHub page and download Windrickening 2.0 zip file by clicking here. Thoroughly go through the readme file to get a glimpse of what has changed in this update. All connections details and configurations have already been explained well in video number 34. So I will not waste your time explaining the same stuff again. Let's jump directly to user configuration settings part. These are the default LED settings as set by IKEA. So I have also kept the same settings by default in our binary file. Hence when you flash Windrickening 2.0 firmware to your ESP board, it will follow the same settings by default. But you are free to change any of the settings. To change these settings, this time I have used 7 memory variables in this update. Let's talk about them one by one. The first variable is called mem1. It stores the lower threshold value of PM2.5 up to which value you want green LED to stay on. The IKEA set default value for the same is 35. But if you want to increase or decrease this value, you can update it via console. Click console and here if you type mem1 and press enter, it will show you the current stored value which is currently 35. Suppose you want to change it to 45, simply type mem1 45 and press enter and that's it. The value has been updated to 45 now. Similarly, the second variable is mem2 and it stores the upper threshold value of PM2.5 above which the red LED will turn on. The default preset value for this variable is 85 but you can change this too by typing mem2 and the desired value say 100 and now it has been updated. The third variable mem3 stores the PM2.5 sensor reading variation differential value which is set to 5 by default. This will let the LEDs change their colors only if the current reading changes by at least 5 points on either side. For example, if currently the sensor reading is 35, it will only shift to amber LED once sensor reading crosses 40. In other words, you can say that your sensor has a tolerance level of plus minus 5. If the air quality in your area is too good and stable, you should change this value to a lower number of around 2 or 3. But if the air quality is bad and unstable, you should increase this value to 10. The fourth and the fifth variables are similar to the first and the second variable. Both these variables store the lower and the upper threshold values but for the lux control which uses a LDR to sense the room light level and accordingly turns on or off the LEDs. Whenever you will turn off your room lights or the light level drops below MEM4 set value, the LEDs will turn off to avoid interfering with your sleep during night. As soon as the light level crosses the upper threshold value stored in MEM5, which is 10, 
the LEDs will automatically turn on again. If you want to disable this feature, set MEM4 to 0 to keep the LEDs on even in the dark or night time. You will have to restart your ESP for this setting to take effect. The next variable, MEM6, is a calibration variable. If ever you feel that your windrickening is reporting the PM2.5 value a bit higher or lower than the actual value, in that case you can calibrate that value with MEM6 variable. For example, if you want the sensor value to be lower by 10 points, you can type MEM6 minus 10 and this will subtract 10 from the reported value and use the resultant value to control the LEDs and to update it in the home assistant. Similarly, if you want to increase the value by 10, you can type MEM6 10 for that and the value will get updated shortly. You can restart the ESP to immediately see the results. If you have integrated this sensor in Home Assistant, then to get this calibrated reading in Home Assistant, you need to manually create a new sensor by copying and pasting these lines in your configuration.yml file. Save the file and restart Home Assistant. After restart, you will now have a new sensor in Home Assistant to get the calibrated value. Let's move further. If you want to disable automatic LED control, you can set MEM7 to 0. And from now on, the LEDs will not be controlled automatically according to PM2.5 values. And now you can utilize this LED panel as a notification panel and can control all LEDs individually from Home Assistant. To disable automatic LED control, MEM4 should also be set to 0 along with MEM7. To enable automatic LED mode, set MEM7 to 1 and MEM4 to any desired value. A restart is required for this setting to take effect. So this was the explanation for all the 7 memory variables. Apart from these memory variables, there are 5 command events to manage the memory variables. Let's talk about them also. Once you have set all the memory variables value, you can check those stored values all at once by typing command event show current and it will show you all the currently active values. You can take a backup of all these values by typing command event backup my settings. This will backup all the current variable settings that can be restored at a later time by using command event restore my settings. Or you can view backed up settings for reference by command event show backup. Anytime, if you want to restore the default IKEA values, you can do that by command event restore defaults. So that's it. This was all about the user-friendly memory variables and the event commands. I hope it will help even a novice to configure his windrickening sensor very easily. I suggest you to check this readme file on github, it will further help you understand all these features discussed in this video. If you still need any assistance, feel free to contact me anytime through comment section below or on VCC ground telegram channel. I have spent hours developing all this for you. If you like my work, let me know by hitting the like button below. If you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe by hitting the subscribe button to get all my future videos to simplify your smart home automation journey with me. Thanks for watching. I'll meet you in the next video soon. Until then, keep experimenting.